Welcome to Eagle Live. What a break from Menard. Interviewing your favorite USA Eagles around the globe. Tony Lambeau into the 22. Now, here's your host, Bill Baker. Everybody, welcome to the Eagle Eyed Rugby Podcast. I am Bill Baker. Thank you for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and leave a comment or a review. Uh, I greatly appreciate it. Now, episode two of season three is coming up here with Capelli Piffoletti. We'll talk about that in a second. But first, uh, programming note if you haven't checked out Clubhouse yet, it's a Clubhouse social audio app. We've been doing a live show on Thursdays lately, and it's one of a kind here in the United States. It's uh, there really is nothing like it in rugby, at least in the country. It's a hour-long show. It's live, special guests every week, uh, where listeners like yourself can come on, ask questions of myself or our guest, most likely of our guest. But come on in. You know we're we're trying to build this game uh, with the fan base, one fan at a time. And every week we get better or more and more listeners, more and more people that join in on the Clubhouse Social Audio app. Again, that is the USA Rugby happy hour on Thursdays, typically at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. This Thursday, we've got none other than Dan Lyle. Now, we are starting at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, so hopefully you can join us. Jump in anytime you like. You don't even have to ask a question. Just listen in as if you listen to a radio show. But join in. It's a lot of fun. All right. Uh, right now, for the next 10 minutes or so, we have Capelli Piffoletti. Checked in with him a few weeks ago before he joined USA Rugby Camp. So we talk about these matches against Canada. But mostly we talk about um, pressure he was under uh, with Saracens during the championship uh, campaign and, and too much pressure on himself, let's say that. Uh, and also what training's been like. Ruben de Haas has been training as well up until now, obviously, during USA. Uh, and also what's future for him, you know, and what would it be like for him to put on a USA jersey in a World Cup. So uh, good little uh, uh, interview with him. He's always fun to talk to. Hope you enjoy. So, KP, how you been? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Yourself? Doing well, man. What's uh, what's keeping you busy these days? You guys are all in camp right now? Doing preseason at the moment. Uh, Ruben's joined us as well, which is pretty awesome. How has he been handling it so far? Uh, he's been enjoying it. Preseason has been tough, but yeah. uh, he says he loves it and stuff. Very different environmental change for himself in terms of joining us, but he says he loves it. Right. No, no kidding. Uh, so let's back up. So the last time you and I spoke, we actually messaged each other. It was uh, the beginning of the championship season. And, um, you know, you were like, listen, it's it's pretty stressful. No, it was a stressful, but you got a lot of pressure on you guys on the team uh, to get back up to uh, premiership. You know, talk about that pressure uh, going into the championship season. You know, uh, talk about the weight on your shoulders uh, um, playing in those games to get back promoted. Um. I think at the time it was just it was unnecessary pressure put on myself and like I, like not just myself but more players the players around the club. Um, obviously, we lost our first game against Cornish Pirates, yeah. and then everything became a bit shaky. We made things harder for ourselves in terms of trying to make the playoffs and then get more back up. But um, after that loss, we had like a good sit down as a team, and then then we just said we should go back to who we are and how we operate as a team. And uh, since that first game, we started going back to Sarah's way and started playing, but most importantly, enjoying ourselves. And then whilst doing that, we're just winning games week in, week out. But, you know, that's that's a good point you made about, I think a lot of players do that. They put maybe a little more pressure on themselves than maybe they, they should. Um, I mean, was there extra pressure for you specifically as far as you know, you obviously want the minutes. You want to start games. You want to do all that. I mean, was that also your pressure as well, individually? You know, pushing yourself harder and harder? Um, I think being a professional athlete, you're always going to have pressure. Like being pressure, nervous, anxious of games and stuff is normal. Probably more, not normal if you don't have any of it. But the pressure I put on myself was just um, because of the type kind of players I had around me. Um, the coaches, the staff, uh, you kind of didn't, didn't want to mess up. But then that's, I think that's what went wrong. I was kind of afraid of um, making a mistake. And I was kind of playing within myself. And then had like a sit down with the coaches. It's like, we back you and stuff. We know you're a good player. Just do your thing. And if you mess up, you mess up. 
and that's when I just started playing well, I reckon. Yeah. Well, and let's talk about those teammates, the Saracen teammates, you know, other than Will and now Ruben now. Um, you know, who's been your biggest influence over the, say, the past couple of years, not just year, but, you know, in your game, say, for the players? You know, with someone like Jamie George, have you taken a lot away from the way he plays the game as well? Yeah, 100% Jamie George. Um, he's he's so good for me in terms of just my throwing, especially set piece. He's constantly helping me. Um, more more so, he's a, like unrobotic, a better lad off the pitch. <laughs> like so good for the young lads. Um, I'd definitely say my cousins, Marco and Bill. Mm-hmm. Um, they're very influential. Uh, both equally the same amount. I've grown become very close to them uh, recent in the season because we, we had a lot of socials as a team <laughs> after games we'll go out and stuff and grew relationship grew stronger no and that's great and and same thing with the coaching staff um obviously you you're able to sit down with them and talk about your your game they have trust in you um you know is there something that the coaching staff works on specifically with you or is it still more of a team uh oriented trainings I think the, the thing we get right at Saris is uh, it's very player driven. Um, coach is obviously there to help you when when you need to be help, uh, helped or when things are needed to be said to you, they say it. But most of the time, they just let the players drive it with the amount of generals we have at the club um, Farrell, Jamie George, Maro, Jackson Ray, all them lot, Mako. Mm-hmm. Like training you just driven by them, and then they're just there to make sure we're on the right track. So let's shift over to USA. Um, you know, World Cup qualifiers coming up this fall. Since the summer test, which obviously didn't go uh, maybe as well as you had planned or anyone else in the team planned, um, you know, what's the message from Gary right now? You know, is does he want something out of you guys while you're training, getting ready for those uh, to meet again? Yeah, obviously Gary wants all of us to come into camp fit, fit as we could all be. Mm-hmm. Possibly be ahead of these games because it's, it's, it's hard. either now or never. It's because we really want to go to the World Cup like yeah. myself. Um, so we got to make sure we put ourselves in the best position to to win those games and qualify for the World Cup. That's kind of the message that he's sent across the group. Yeah, exactly. And um, now, do you have a hatred for Canada like the rest of it? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Uh, oh, on the pitch, to. but <laughs> no. uh, there was actually a saying when I joined USA, like my first USA game. Well, USA against Canada game. Apparently, there's a saying. Probably shouldn't say this, but yeah. there's a saying in the USA camp that's called ABC, which means always beat Canada. <laughs> <laughs> which is fair enough. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I've heard worse about other teams, or at least at the club level. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's not bad at all. Now, not to get too far ahead of yourself, obviously you're concentrating on a um, Saracen season, the World Cup qualifiers. Um, but I know you, you've talked to, you know, David Anu, whoever else about probably, I don't know if you talked to him much at all about World Cup experience, but have you thought at all yet about what it would be like to pull on a USA jersey in a World Cup uh, environment? I've definitely thought about it when I missed that World, well, the recent World Cup, mm-hmm. like watching the boys play, thinking it would have been a, surreal dream or massive honor to fly in the USA jersey and represent at the World Cup but I like to not think too ahead of myself like like if the opportunity came in a couple of years time I'd jump at it but for now just keep trying to improve play some good rugby and hopefully um, Gary has some faith and trust in me and calls me in his team absolutely and let's just go back to the immediate future, the uh, upcoming season for Saracens. Again, uh, any matches you're looking forward to, uh, you know, any meetups you're looking forward to, say with AJ's team uh, or Paul's team, whoever else, have you thought about that at all also? Uh, I think it's just every team, to be honest. Like, yeah. They've probably all not missed Saris, uh since we've been in the champ for last season, but we're definitely buzzing and excited to be back as a team up in the Prem and hopefully compete for the for the championship again, which is what we've kind of said as a team. No, that's great. KP, listen, that's that's it, man. I really appreciate it. I know a quick interview with you. Um, yeah. You know, good luck with this season coming up. But we, we all hope we see you in Eagles jersey also this fall. 
Um, you know, good luck with, with Ruben fitting in as well. And uh, looking forward to see you out there in the pitch. Cheers, cheers, Bill. Appreciate it.